don't know me or if you've never been here before, welcome. My name's Rachel and I'm the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today is Friday and I have a thrift flip video for you. Uh, now, if you caught Tuesday's thrift haul, you would have seen that I am part of a networking group and as a group, we were challenged to a 40-40 challenge. And what that means is that we each got to take $40 out thrifting, buy as many items as we could, upcycle what we needed to, and then we have 40 days to sell as many items as we can. And whoever makes the most money in those 40 days wins a little prize. So we'll see how it goes. I have to say though, I was part of a conference call with my networking group Tuesday night and as confident as I was in my haul, uh, some of those people got some really great stuff for their $40. So we'll see. Um, but anyway, for today's video, I did manage to get a couple of those items done and also a little table that I've been kind of kicking around in my kitchen for a while now. It's a little antique table um, that I keep bumping my knee on because it was under my work table. So it's time to get it out of my kitchen. So you'll see that as part of the video as well. Um, I do hope you enjoy the video and please remember if you do to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would really love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And then you can hit the little notification bell that way you don't miss anything. Uh, at the end of the video, I would love to hear which of the items your favorite is, so please remember to comment below and let me know. And without further ado, let's get to the three items that I got done for you for today's video. So project one is one of the items I picked up for the 4040 challenge. It's this really cute wooden pedestal bowl. And I decided that I wanted to go ahead and paint this one with DIY's crinoline. I wanted it to be white without being a brashy white. And I love crinoline for that. Now the beautiful thing about DIY paint is that it's so pigmented that I only had to go over this dark wood with two coats of crinoline and it gave it good enough coverage to move on to the next step. So once that was done and the second coat of paint was dry, I decided to go ahead and distress. Now I really wanted this to be heavily distressed. So I'm taking my damp shop towel and really rubbing a bit of that paint back off just to show some of that beautiful wood tone underneath. Once that was done, I thought the bottom of the bowl could really use a little something. So I grabbed this beautiful little owl transfer and this is out of the pack called Forest by Redesign by Prima. And it's got this really pretty wreath shape that fit perfectly in the bottom of this bowl. So I'm just applying that transfer and once that's down, I kind of burnish it in with my hands. And then I go over the entire piece with one good coat of Big Top by DIY. And then this piece is all finished and ready to go. Project two is this adorable little picture of some sparrows on a branch that I picked up at an estate sale on our last junk run uh, and is also part of the $40 challenge. So for this, I wanted to incorporate it in with the uh, display that I've been working on building that has a lot of oranges, blues, some neutrals, and this green color in it. So I am painting this frame with two good even coats of Gypsy Green by DIY. Now I know I've heard from a lot of you that you're not super keen on the green, and I apologize. You could use any color you wanted. Um, just for this project, I thought the green really brought brought out the leaves in the branch and it will also fit in with my display once I'm ready to get it all built. So once the paint was all dry, I went in with my shop towel and I pretty heavily distressed this. Again, if you're not a, a big fan of distressing, you could totally leave that step out. Uh, but once that was done and the paint was dry again, I did go over this with um, some clear wax by DIY and I'm just using my nice soft brush 
and going over this with one good coat of wax and then taking my shop towel and just gently wiping back any excess that's left. Now I do this as a precursor for the dark wax just because it makes the dark wax not stick quite as as much and makes it a little bit easier to move around and so that it doesn't make the paint look quite so grungy as if you put it on directly on the paint. Uh, but as I've said before, you know that DIY paint is porous and can be reactivated with water, so you definitely need to seal it. Now, once I was done, I went back and put a little bit more dark wax over some of the grooved areas just to make them stand out a little bit more. It's one nice thing about the dark wax is you can build layers if you need to. Then it was just a matter of removing the duct tape and uh, giving this a good wash and then it's pretty much ready to go out on the floor. Now when I sprayed it with Windex I get, did get a couple little speckles in the paint so here you can see I'll take a little bit of clear wax just a little bit on my finger and go over the wax on the frame and it just totally blends in all those speckles and makes them disappear so really handy little trick. three is this cute little antique table and this thing definitely gave me a little bit of a run for my money. The first step was removing the old veneer and this is the first time I've ever done that. Uh, so what you do is take your wet towel, not dripping wet, but uh, fairly wet and put that on the table and then take your iron on its highest setting and let that steam activate the glue and then piece by piece scrape that veneer off. This was a very time consuming process, probably took me about oh an hour or so and of course there were two layers of veneer so when I got about halfway done I realized oh gosh there's another layer so I just went ahead and started started taking both of them off together once that was done I took it outside used some 80 grit sandpaper and my palm sander to get the rest of that glue residue off and then I switched over to some 150 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out I really wanted to stain the top of this a dark color and then paint the base that was my goal. So I took it back inside uh, once it was all sanded and smooth and gave it a good bath. I had to really work to get some of that sawdust out or the sanding dust out of those grooves. So here you can see me using my um, scraper and a towel to get that out. Anyway, I gave the whole thing a really good bath. And for those of you who aren't keen on the gypsy green, I apologize. Um, but that is the color I decided to go with on this table. The green in the top and the actual wood is what kind of spoke to me and uh, made me decide on this color. Not to mention it'll really go well with the display that I'm building. Anyway, a little artist brush to fill in those crevices around. The, the side and of course I ended up with a little bit of bleed through so I sanded the, the area smooth and then just added a coat of um, general finishes semi-gloss top coat uh, once it was clean and dry just to uh, seal that in again and then I went over that bottom portion with one more good even coat of gypsy green. Once that was done I was ready to finally stain the top. Um, I was excited because I thought it would be so pretty having this dark, dark color with that gypsy green. But unfortunately, parts of the wood would not take the stain no matter what I had to do. So it was on to plan B. I shellacked over the stain to make sure it wouldn't bleed into my paint and began painting the top, which wasn't my plan for sure. But uh, it is what it is. I just had to kind of move on and do what I needed to do to get this table done. So I painted it. I sanded the top and that bottom portion again just with some 220 grit sandpaper uh, to make them nice and smooth and then began the process of distressing. So I wanted this piece to be very well distressed. Uh, it is an antique and I wanted to kind of have it show its age I guess and then once that was done and I was it was dry again I began the waxing process. So again just going over this with a coat of clear wax and once the wax is on, I wipe it off with my um, shop towel. And then once that's done, 
I went over it with one good even coat of dark wax. So you, it's amazing how dark that wax looks when you first put it on, but thanks to having the coat of clear underneath it, it really wipes off well. And even though it looks a little blotchy at first, it's okay. It's just how the paint takes the wax and once it's dry and cured, it will look all nice and even again. Anyway, I love how this little table turned out, even if it's not exactly how I had imagined it in my head. So I hope you like it too. Tuesday's video it will be another thrift flip video as I work through the rest of the items that I need to upcycle for the 4040 challenge so I hope you'll join me for that and please remember uh, if you would like to purchase any of the DIY products that I use in my videos you can do that at my cottage here in Spokane or on my website at www.beeclecticcottagespokane.com I hope you have a great weekend and a wonderful Monday, and I will see you back here on Tuesday. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.